All right, well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra and broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. And um, today's topic, we're gonna start with the uh, New Year resolution and talk about that and see where that's gonna lead us. If I run out of um, content, then um, I'll add another topic to it too, but we'll start with that one. Um, as always, let's just do a silent meditation and um, our meditation is gonna be about 15 minutes to 20 minutes. And what we're going to do is, of course, those of you who've been with me before, you already know about it. But uh, for those of you who are watching this webinar for the first time, is the most simple meditation is basically turning your attention inwards, away from objects. So what I mean is, if you simply close your eyes and observe your thoughts, witnessing or you're hearing your thoughts, you pay attention to that. As soon as you start watching your thoughts, you will see your mind will go quiet because in the case of your presence, you're being here. So it's like the eagle opens up its wings and, and is ready to fly. So as soon as you go into this place of presence and you're looking inwards, the mind disappears because it's just not real. It's just a bundle of thoughts. That's all the mind is. Even though we've been living with it all of our lives and it's been kind of hunting us and ruling us, but it's just a non-existing phenomena. So what you want to do is turn your attention inwards, take a look at your thoughts without an effort. And if you still hearing thoughts, all you do is follow the stream of thoughts inwards. Follow your thoughts and see where do they come from. Take a look, where do your thoughts come from? Follow them to the source. Where do they arise? Is there validity to them? Are they being manufactured by your brain? Or your brain is simply a receiver and it's picking up on thoughts. Is there such a thing as the mind or is just a lot of thoughts? So take a look. Without an effort, without really trying and don't try to stop your mind. Don't haggle with it. Simply take a look, observe the thoughts, see where they come from. without trying or any struggle, you're simply here 
and you're looking. It's like a sniper. You're waiting to see if there's a movement and you're looking at it. And everything becomes very quiet.
slowly, slowly come back. When you're <clears throat> just hanging out in this moment and without trying to accomplish anything, so you've already taken the accomplishment part away, but you're just hanging out. And a lot of us, life is very busy, so the mind is running all the time. But when you pull the plug on the mind and you kind of come to this decision, okay, I'm only going to hang out here in this moment without any expectations. So then you create a situation that you can go beyond the mind. Or if you follow the stream of your thoughts inwards, so, and then you go to the source, you're going to see where do they come from, these thoughts. And then you just see, like, they come from nowhere. They just appear out of nowhere. So there's not a factory that is manufacturing them. They just bubble up. So you follow the source. And then all of a sudden, everything becomes really quiet. So you just go into this deep silence because you go back to the source. To the source of who you are. Not who you think you are. To the source before your name came, before your identity showed up, before your gender showed up. You just go into this unified field of nothingness. It's just is. And you are here, but you're not anything. And there's an expansion starts to take place. All of a the sudden, there's, it's, you're vast. But it's very still. It's very quiet. It's very still. But it's here. So you touch the purity of yourself, the consciousness. You touch the vastness. And in that touching the vastness, so you come across and you touch it. And uh, many people are not even aware of that. And this incredible phenomena appears. Something vast, something huge, something that the mind cannot comprehend it. It can't understand it. 
but there is like a giant and you have touched that. And then, you know, you come back to this level of consciousness and you say, oh my God, uh, Zarathustra, I was gone. I, wow, I was so relaxed or I was in such a deep silence. It felt so good. It feels so good because you are touching the true part of yourself, the self. That which is always here. And it doesn't have a story. Now, from that comes the story. The story appears from there. So it comes the me. Me, I am someone. I am, my name is Zarathustra. I'm from the US. I'm a spiritual teacher. Now there's a story coming. And this year, my re this new year, I have a resolution. I want to go to the gym three times a week. And uh, I want to lose some weight. I want to quit smoking cigarettes. I want to quit drinking alcohol. I want to make a lot of money. I want to get into a routine of whatever, whatever is your agenda that this me feels that I need to, we call it the new year resolution. Actually, one of our friends brought it up. So I'm grateful to that. So. How many people made their new year resolution this year? That starting the new year, they're going to be doing blah, 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 blah. Only two people, that's it? That's all? Oh, okay, three? Yeah. yeah. I made many new year resolutions. Sometimes they work. And... Rest of the times they don't. I mean, I may be doing it for two weeks and then after two weeks, I, I'm not doing it anymore. Why do you think that happens? Anybody? Like we make a new resolution and we can do it for two weeks. And then after two weeks, we, it doesn't happen anymore. Anita, you want to tell me? You have to unmute yourself. I think uh, this is a result of the mind. Because we want something, that's something uh, reasonable. We want to do something for the health of or something else. It doesn't come from us, really. I'm, that's why it doesn't happen, I think. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's fair enough. Yeah, the mind. Lauren, you... Get your way. Sorry. Uh, hi. Do I? Go ahead. I think life just gets in the way of the resolutions. Oh, I don't have time for that today. And every time you do that, it's easier to not take time today. So do you think the New Year resolution is separated from life? What's that? Well, it shouldn't be, but it shouldn't be. But yet, when life gets busy, they tend to take a back seat. Right. 
right. It sucks, doesn't it? Can you imagine you could always stick to your New Year resolution and complete it? I mean, in a way, that would be cool, was, wouldn't be? So, Miss Lauren, what do you think? About why people don't stick to their resolutions? Yeah. Um, I think they make the resolution because they think that when they have it, then they'll be happy. Um, like I have friends who are like, I'm not going to drink for 30 days and they don't even make it 30 days because two weeks in, they're like, I don't feel better. <laughs> not worth it. Um, so I think, yeah, I think sometimes people think they're going to feel better when they have it or with like weight loss, they feel like, oh, it's just too much work. It's not worth it. Like it's more torture to try to lose the weight than to just keep doing what I was doing. Right. And uh, yeah. when you make your new year, how many times you've made your new year resolutions and been able to complete it? One time or twice and the rest of the times? You got No, not good. <laughs> no. I mean, you're very disciplined. So I, I thought you were going to say like you always make it. I don't really make a lot of resolutions. Um, there's a couple that I've kept that are, that I've still kept like to this day, but generally, I don't know. I've not been a big New Year's resolution person because a lot of stuff I knew I just wasn't going to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Anybody else? Hi, Mia. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you. Yay. Nice to see all of you. Oh, we are good. Oh, ah. Who's that's your? It's Michael. So, Michael, so cute. Hi, Michael. What's in the pinky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're good. So the New Year resolution thing is, again, comes from this basically sense of I am someone and capable of being able to accomplishing things. I, I have my independence. I'm mighty. I have my free will. I'm strong. I'm powerful. And I decide on doing this and I'm going to accomplish it. So, and if you do, then naturally we're going to tap ourselves on the shoulder and say, see, I did it. I made the decision and I did it. And uh, because I'm powerful, um, I can accomplish things. And then the times that we can't do it, it's just like, okay, life came on the way and things got busy or uh, I didn't drink for two weeks and I didn't feel better. So I went back into drinking um, or whatever. So we have reasons that, or life wasn't kind to me, all kinds of things happen and uh, I got distracted. And uh, another time I'm going to try to do it. So it all comes to this uh, sense of, one moment, let me see where this weird sound comes from. Amir, can you hear this? There's some kind of like sound in there. Is that from my microphone or anything? Hello, Amir, are you around? Do you hear me? Hello, who is this? Yeah. This is Hans Anderson. Yeah, hi. I'm on the top. Hi. 
Yeah, hi, go ahead. I'm, I can hear you. Yeah, well, but I'm talking about this uh, commitment to the ideas of the future. I think this is a eco uh, thing. And uh, <laughs> once you do that for, for a while, you realize that the self is going to take over anyway. So you let it go. I, I let it go. And then even I have written it down and all that. Well, it may pop certain one day. Oh, yeah, that was what I thought about the New Year's Eve when I made this, this, this plan of the New Year. But it's not a plan. It's, it's, a, it's a collection of ideas of what would be nice or possible or danger, a, a, a great experience or something like that. So uh, uh, the idea is that uh, the whole thing the self uh, manifest directly, but it can't direct, uh, it can't manifest without activating this ego as far as I can see. So that's my answer right now at least. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you. That's a great answer. Appreciate it. Good. And I have a question. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, it's a very interesting name you have, Saratusa. <laughs> How do you relate to Saratusa, the original one? Uh, what was the last thing you said? How do you How do you relate to the original Persian Saratusa, the avatar from Persia, five thousand years ago? Um. When I first got the name Zarathustra from Osho, from... Uh, ah, Bhagavan. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know him, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a long time ago. It feels like yes. a, a lifetime ago. Um, I, I, I had not heard of Zarathustra, of the name I heard of Zaratosh. In, uh -huh. in Persian Persian language, in Farsi. Farsi, I yes. Yeah, I didn't know its interpretation in Greek or uh, in English. They they call it Zoroaster, and yes. uh, in Greek Zarathustra. From what I've learned, uh, yes. I didn't know. So I was like, "What is this weird name that Osha gave me?" But everybody uh -huh. in the room. When I got initiated, everybody, you know, when they called me and they gave me my sannyasin uh, name and the mala, and they said, Swami Anand Zarathustra, everybody in a room went, wow. <laughs> and uh, so everybody went, wow. But I was like, what is this weird name I got? Okay. Then like a week after that, I realized this is the name of the master. Yes. Of, uh, yeah, the prophet, prophet Zarathustra, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. here and there, every once in a while, I would introduce myself at Zarathustra, and I remember someone said, "This is a lot of responsibility to carry this name," mm -hmm. and uh, and at that time, I didn't really understand it, uh, but as time went on, it started to sink in. Um, of what was the name was given to me. Um, you know, uh, it's I I don't sometimes you know, it depends because it's also a trap. You can fall yeah. into the trap as far as oh Osha gave me the name Zarathustra and I must be special and. And that's a very easy trap to fall into. Yes. And uh, there came a time that I had to even let go of the name mm -hmm. and come into this place of being nameless and, yeah. uh, and letting even that go. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So... In some ways, it means a lot to me, and in some ways, it doesn't mean anything. No, I see. If basically the way I look at it is, 
if I get caught up in the mind and I'm really identified with the story, yeah. then it's totally meaningless. Well, if, um, if I see it, if I see it, if I may, I, as long as you are nameless and you're in the silent open space and you are nothing, then when you use that truth, that's not who you are, that's the role you play. That's how I understand it. Yeah, that's a way of saying it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's where, a sign. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, where Sorry. are you from, Han? Han, Han I'm from Han. Denmark. Den Denmark. I'm from Denmark, yes. Denmark, yeah, great. Yes, and I'm an elderly guy. I'm 86 years old, and I have a long story of meditation, starting with Transcendental Meditation back in 1973 with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And I have all the programs that you can dream of. <laughs> but uh, there comes a point when any technique or any fashion of doing things is, is not right for me. It's just being right as instructors. Just be silent and see for that. Yeah, so yeah. I, enjoy, I enjoy it. Yeah, but you have yeah. gone beyond. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you've yes. gone beyond the techniques. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but some days, you know, it just pops up anyway. I say, okay, it pops up. Let's leave it, leave it. But just let it pop up. It'll, it'll wither away in a, in a while and then it's it. And there are great difference in the days and things and, and how the tennis <laughs> are playing and all that. I'm also an astrologer, so... No, I'm not an astrologer. I'm playing the role of an astrologer. To right. Back in there. And originally, I'm a master of science and mechanical engineering, so I have a lot of education. And that makes a, a heavy intellect. That makes it quite, quite um, uh, challenging to, to leave the mind. I get it. I, get it. Yeah. I understand. But the good thing is you see the mind, so... If you see it, then it can't do much to you anyway. That's right, yeah. Uh, but the funny thing is, when we did this meditation, I, I, I thought you said 30, uh, 15 minutes. Did, did you say 50 minutes? Because the time, all of, all of a sudden, I think, that this is more than 15 minutes, and then I started be <laughs> becoming impatient. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's okay, because that's also an experience. So where does that impatience come from anyway? So any experience in that process is, 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 a, is, a, is a value, it's an education somehow. So, so far, thank you for, the, for this introduction. This is the first time yeah. I'm here. Well, I'm a friend I, of... Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. I feel honored. Oh, thank you, Self. Yeah, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for reaching out. Hans. Yeah. So, back to our New Year resolution is that, of course, uh, there is, we're all, if I can make improvements in myself, there's a lot, I have a long list of things I like to change about myself and um, to correct them or improve myself. But um, some of them, sometimes I'm able to do, the rest of it I can't. So what happened for me in my journey is in the beginning, I thought like everybody else that I could do things. I had free will that I can, I'm, Almighty, I got the power, I can decide on doing this, doing that. If I put on my mind on anything, I can accomplish it because the mind is very powerful. And as I prog progressed on this path and went deeper in this journey of self-realization and self-exploration through the grace of my teacher, uh, or one of my teachers, Papaji, 
I started to realize uh, I didn't really have, have not much to say. And there isn't anything I can personally accomplish, no matter how much I put my mind into it. So in a way, it's a curse and it's a blessing. It's, it's kind of like, like there are different times people asking me, okay, Zaratustra, when are you going to put a seminar or you're, are you going to do something here in Tulum or are you going to teach? And, and, and my answer is like, yeah, I'm open to it, but I don't have any energy to go out there and try to put, organize an event in Tulum or hustle or advertise myself that people come to my event. The energy is not there. And it's like, okay, if existence wants that to happen, if life wants to, for me, teach in Tulum on a regular basis, then existence will put it together. It will create the means. I'll meet the right people or somebody discovers me or somehow things come together and they feel compelled to create the space for me to do this. That's how it is for me now or anything else, anything else I want to do. So it's kind of, you start to go to this realization of, yeah, uh, there are things I want to accomplish this year. And I'm very sincere about it. But is life going to cooperate? Is life going to line it up? Same as when I'm driven, I'm working, I'm driven, I'm whatever projects I have, whether it's spiritual projects or I want to make money. You know, like whatever you do in your life. Not so, some of you are working, you got a ordinary or you're in the matrix and you're, you're working in the world and you have to provide. And uh, maybe some of you are businessman, businesswoman. And you're really driven by this power. And it's fantastic. It's happening for you. And you're accomplishing things. And things may be going your way. And then there are times like, no matter what you do, it just doesn't happen. It's not happening. And we can see that somehow in... For me, it's been very clear, like in relationship or love department. It's like you may, and I'm sure some of you have experienced it, that maybe you've been successful in a lot of different areas. Like you've been a great mom, you've been a great dad, you have accomplished a lot, you've gone to school, you educated, you've been able, you won in a money department, money area, money game. But then when it comes to love department, it's not happening. No matter how much you're trying to manipulate things and pull this and push that, it's just not happening. It's one dissatisfaction after another dissatisfaction. It's just like as if there's a force there it says, no, you got to be alone. And you're really struggling. You can trying to do all kinds of jumping jacks. It just doesn't happen. And it sucks. But it is what it is. So back to this New Year resolution thing is for me is like, yes, it's my intention for example my goal this year is to dive into language school and uh, learn learn spanish but is it going to happen 
And it seems like everything is set up. Everything is lined up. I'm in the right place. And um, perfect situation. Is this going to happen? Am I going to ever walk into a language school? Am I going to start learning? Would it happen or not? Is it in my destiny to learn Spanish? I don't know. And in my head, I don't make any stories out of it. It's definitely my priority. But would it happen? Is existence going to say yes to that? Are the stars going to align? Because so far, any, every time I tried, it didn't happen. It happened for a short period of time, and then it fell apart somehow. So what I'm saying is this is it's something that you have to come to it. It has to be your own realization of recognizing that there is a force that is running you. There is something bigger than your mind with this feeling, this sense of you're separated. There's a sense that you are someone, you're a person. I am this individual capable of making my own decisions and capable of accomplishing things because it feels like it, that I'm the one who's doing it. But what happened for me is I started to realize that sense is false. It's just a sense. It's a false sense. It's not real. It's an optical illusion. And I'm not saying you have to agree with me and you have to live that life. You have to figure it out for yourself. You got to come to it on your own. I mean, I can just point my, I can tell you this is the direction. This is where you're going to go. But I can't make it happen for you. But when you are putting your story away, whatever your story is, the story that, shoot, I'm single, I'm this age, I, how come I don't find the love of my life? How come this doesn't happen? Or why, why am I still working or why I'm not working or whatever, whatever the struggle, whatever you're struggling with in life. Why, how come I can't lose weight? Or how come I can't put on weight? Or whatever the story is. When you go beyond the story, when you put the story aside and you dive into, you turn your attention inward, you go into silence, you go into this place, And there is no mind. There is no mind activity. There's no thoughts. You dive into the unified field. You dive into the oneness. Then all of a sudden, the story of me have to accomplish something or the story of me, I am single and I don't have a partner or I'm a single mommy or I'm not wealthy or I'm wealthy or whatever, again, whatever is your story, I'm overweight. Whatever is your story, the story disappears. 
there is no story. And you dive into this place of you are pure being. You're here. You're not a stupor. You haven't become stupid or dysfunctional. You're just quiet. And the goal and the agenda disappears. The stuff you have to accomplish disappear. And then all of a sudden, something else reveals itself. Something that knows your needs better than you do. Something that's been with you from the time, even before you were born, to the time you were born on this planet, and you grew up gradually, a walk with you, something that knows you in the deepest level, that thing, whatever that thing is, you can call it God, you can call it consciousness. You, if you're in Buddhism, you say emptiness. Something reveals itself, something appears. And in that, you are in touch with a power that is beyond imagination. We cannot even imagine it. And in this place that you're silent, you're quiet, and you have come to this, you're touching this, you have, or it's swallowing you, eats you, and you're in it. It's like you're in the bosoms of the Her Majesty, the Supreme. Mama, she's got this big breast, and she's having you like a baby there and holding you against her breast, and you're just there like a little baby, safe, taken care of. You're in this place of silence, quiet. And then the power reveals itself. And you will see like a lot of these things that you have, these goals that you have to accomplish and you can't do them. They just start happening. And of course, if you talk to the new age people, the new spiritual spirituality or pseudo spirituality, they will tell you that they're manifesting it. It's them, you're manifesting your own reality. But this is not it. You're actually not manifesting anything. You're not even trying to manifest anything because you have gone even beyond that. You have gone into the silence you have gone into the surrender of what is and all of a sudden miracles start to happen and when i say miracles not necessarily i'm not just talking about moses walked into the ocean and he opened up the ocean and the Hebrew tribe went through. It can be that. But in a very subtle way, things happen. All of a sudden, money starts to come very easily. All of a sudden, connection starts to happen very easily. All of a sudden, you, your needs are being met very easily. Somehow, even though there's the appearance of action, even though it looks like you are working, you're getting up and going to work, you're doing this, you're doing that. It's not like you're just sitting there not doing anything. But things lining up.
because that which has created the existence, that which has created you and I in its own image, that which runs through you and I, that life force is also wants to reveal itself to us. It wants you to recognize it. It's not like it's got a malice intention and it's there to make you suffer and beat you up and not let you find your love of life or keep you broke or keep you in pain and physical pain or emotional pain to suffer. It's not like it's enjoying doing that to you. It's somehow, it's a process of it revealing itself to you, which is itself again. It wants to show itself that it's here and you're actually taken care of. Yet at times it's very painful. And it doesn't matter, it's not, you're not the only one who experienced the pain. It happens for all of us, emotional pain, physical pain. Sense of being abandoned, sense of being left out, sense of not being loved, being lonely. We all experience that. It's a part of the experience of being in this dimension and the desire to improve, the desire of unity, the desire of, of being healthy, feeling good, desire of not being alone, being loved, finding your partner or friends or family, going beyond our fears, all the fears, all the stuff happening in the world, fear, fear, fear. What's going to happen to me? How many times a day you ask yourself that question? What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to the planet with the way the COVID is going? And are we losing our freedom? And I can't travel and I can't go to a restaurant and I can't do this and I can't do that. Where is this going to go? And the disease is getting meaner and better. And are we all going to be slaves of the system? What's going to happen to us? Right? You thought about these things? Yeah, we all do. We all. So what do I do? When these thoughts come, I just will share with you my personal experience. Yeah, all of these thoughts come. Same as it comes for you with the emotions. Maybe the difference is that for me, I always come back to the center. The moment I just see that there's all these things happening, I come back to my center. I come back to this place. This place that it's quiet. This place that is safe. Coming back and touching that and recognizing that something all of my life has been protecting me and has brought me to this point. And I have no reason not to trust it, that it's not going to carry me on. I have absolutely no reason not to trust it at this point. It's been taking care of me and my family. 
all this time. Why would it fail me now? And where do my desires come from? Where is my resolution, New Year resolution comes from? The thought that I want to accomplish something. Let's say my New Year resolution this year is that I want to learn language, or I want to find my partner, or I want to have, I want to make half a million dollars by the end of the year. And I'm in the business and I'm making money. I just going to be working really hard. So that's my resolution. Coming back to the place, stopping, disconnecting from all the chatter and coming back here and recognizing that all is well in this moment. It's all perfect in this moment. There's nothing missing. I'll tell you a story. The other day, a few days ago, my lower back was hurting so much and I still was in this funk of this thing that I wasn't 100%. I wasn't sick, I wasn't well, and then my lower back. I wake up in the morning and I can't get out of the bed. You know, I'm just like, literally cannot. The pain was so bad. And there are moments like the mind was saying like, is this what's going to be my life from now on? You know, fuck, I hate getting old and this is only going to get worse and it sucks. And, you know, all these thoughts coming like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just lying down in the bed and I'm just seeing this storm of thoughts going through my mind. It's like, I'm too young to be like this. I'm, not, I'm too old. I don't have anyone to help me. I'm left out. You know, all kinds of thoughts. So I'm just watching the thoughts and it's dark cloud. They're hardcore. It's like storm bombarding you know boo. so i'm just lying down there i can't really move and then i put my hands on my heart and i'm just like going back into beyond the thoughts into the silence and it's like okay calm down Zaratustra. all is well So I'm just lying down for five, 10 minutes. And then when the storm went, and then all of a sudden my legs started to work and you know I was able to get out of the bed. And then a friend of mine came to visit, came and knocked on the door and said, hey, so just try. I just came to see you. I said, you're perfect, come over here. I lie down, I say, here, I want you to take your shoes off and, and go and stand on my back with both feet. So I had him come and stand on my, my lower back. And he's standing, he put one foot and he's going to put another foot. Are you okay? You're going to be fine. I said, fine. Now I want you to slowly jump up and down. So he's jumping up and down on my back. So he's just kind of, because I knew hands or elbows not going to work. I need a lot of weight on my lower back. So he's just doing this and the spasm went away. But existence created the situation. Like the back is gone, is out to a point like it's paralyzed. And then in the meantime, send somebody 
to help me. It's the same existence that creates the problem and comes with the solution. All you have to do is just go back into the center of yourself and go back to the trust. But it's a part of the test. It's a part of life. Life is always going to create something. Things sometimes go smooth, but there's always going to be something. Always. Always. There's going to be a, a curve ball thrown at you. You just have to make a daily practice of always coming back into the center of yourself and touching the greater, your, greater part of yourself. Like what we were doing in the beginning in our meditation, some of you went, in, went into this place. How, how many of you went to this place of pure beingness and silence? when we were doing the meditation. And there was like no story. So now you know the place, dive into it on regular places. The place is within yourself. The place surrounds you. It dances around you. It plays with you, it's here. It's not in Tibet, it's not in India, it's not in South America, it's within yourself, it's around you. That's why I say you're the one who you're looking for. All right. Did I put you guys to sleep? <laughs> Anybody has any comments, questions? Anything to share? Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Unmute yourself, Connie. Nice to see you. Somehow your internet worked. I can't hear you. Now? It's better? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Hi, Connie. Nice seeing you. Yeah, it's nice to be here again. But, you know, I, sometimes I can, can't hear anything. I can only see you. So, I right. miss Never mind. I have an, a question about the thoughts. You said it was, uh, they were coming from bubbling up from nowhere. The thoughts? Yeah. Okay. But how can something come from nowhere? I mean, if you have a bubble, it comes from water or something else. Fluid. Right. Okay, so now you're trying to figure it out with the mind. I know that. But right. when, when I try to go into my, my stillness, my, my own space, then the thoughts bubble up. So... They must come from one place. Okay. In my mind, in my mind so, I think. So what is, what do you, where do you think they come from? I have asked myself for several years now, and I have two, right. maybe two solutions. Uh, something is that it is uh, karmic, that I have some uh, uh, genetic putting in my cells that uh, taking problems up and I put uh -huh. it in the boxes and uh, uh, then I take it if I have some feelings then it I, I it opens up right right and so yes. yeah right and some, well, let me ask you let me ask you this question have do you ever sleep and not dream you ever yeah. like you know you tired you put your head down yeah and you're gone and then maybe six hours, eight hours after you wake up. Yeah. And 
And it's such a deep sleep that when you wake up, you just say, oh, my God, I was gone. I was absolutely gone. Yeah. Yeah. Does it ever happen? Yeah. So when you sleep and you don't dream and you're in this deep level of sleep, you're gone. Where do you, where do you go? What happens to you? I think that my soul is going to, to, to where it belongs. Okay. And where does it belong? In the oneness. The oneness. Okay, great. So when you sleep and you don't dream and you're gone, your being, your soul goes back into the oneness. Yeah. Right. So, same thing with the thoughts. Where do they come from? They come from where everything else comes from. Where does everything come from? I mean, to think, in order for things to be here, we need an observer. Someone yeah. must observe yeah. things to record it, to say, for example, today the weather is cloudy, it's raining, it's cold. There is, there's got to be an instrument that is able to measure things. Yeah. There has to be a device, something that is taking information and comparing it and yeah. making a statement. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Right. Exactly. So in, in the spiritual world and in human consciousness, we call it the witness, the observer. Yeah. Or I can call it Connie. Yeah. Somebody, something is here, is aware of the mind is very busy. I have a lot of thoughts. I'm going crazy. So something is aware of the mind being busy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But that thing, which is aware of a busy mind, that thing by itself, it's mute. It, it has, it's just a measuring device. But it doesn't have moods. No. So, yeah. so, so, right. So something is recording yeah. the thoughts. And let's say you wake up in the morning. And do you always wake up in the morning feeling exactly the same? Obviously not. Some morning you feel better. Some morning you feel worse. Sometimes you don't sleep very well or you got bad news and you wake up, you're depressed, you wake up, you're happy. And so how do you, how do you know? Something is aware that you're feeling good and something is aware you're feeling bad. Yeah. So some, there has to be something there that is observing it. So what you are saying is what I what I think you are saying is that what I am looking for that's what I see. Um what you're looking for well I'm looking for 50 million dollars but I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So <laughs> No, I mean what you what you not not looking in that way but but more exact if i'm looking at a plant or a flower then uh i see that yeah uh, I, I mean so yeah you you look up you look out out of the window or where you are right now you see a computer you see a lamp you see a yeah. desk but are they outside of you really are they really no, objects? No, no, they are in my mind. 
I think I think I create them, create them with my thoughts. I don't know, but I don't know. I think it's better to be here in this place of I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because again, if we go to this place that you created with your mind, well, why can't you create $50 million? You created a lamp, you created a table and a computer. Well, why don't you create the man of your life or the woman of your life or $50 yeah. million? You're very good in creating. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So back to what we were talking about is that when I go back, I go beyond thoughts and stories. And there's no thoughts. Then all my concerns about what's going to happen to me in the future, what's going to happen with the COVID, uh, the humans are going to be around or not, or are we all going to die, or are we going to be it's assimilated into half human, half computer. All the stories disappear. There's no story. It's just here. And I go into this blissful state because I'm back into the being that has always been here, that which is always here. And that which from that, all these things bubble up. These humans appear to be, these things appear to be, these objects come out. But then when I'm not, when I go back to sleep and I'm not dreaming, as if everything goes back to nothing, it's like there's nothing. But then when the witness comes back, I wake up, I come to consciousness, now, the instrument is awake. I turned it on, the measuring instrument, then everything also appears with it. There's an old riddle. It says, if a tree falls into, in a forest and there is no one witnessing it, there's nobody there to witness it, is it making noise when it's falling down? Because trees, every once in a while, they fall, they break, they fall, they're old. So when they fall in a forest, do they make noise? There has to be somebody there to see and witness it. If there's nobody there witnessing it, do they make noise or not? I don't know. Yeah. So stick to the fundamentals. Stick to what is the most simple thing to do. Stick to what really makes you feel wonderful. Stick to that which brings bliss and bring you into this blissful place. It's definitely not an object. It's when you go beyond the mind and you're in this deep, meditative, quiet place. Isn't that where you're the most happy? And it's unconditional. There's no conditions to it. Yeah, I'm very happy when I come, finally I come to my beloved. But it's conditional. Because there's another person has to agree to be with me and she has to feel good and everything has to be right and I'm, my stomach is good and I don't have a headache and she doesn't have a headache and I don't have a diarrhea and she doesn't have cancer and she has, doesn't have a toothache or whatever is conditional 
So if all conditions are correct, meet each other, I'm happy for a couple hours or a day. I'm talking about something that has no conditions. You dive inwards. You go beyond your mind. And then you touch this place, which is always here. And it's blissful. And it's within your reach at any moment. You get into the habit of touching it. You get into the habit. You don't even have to say, oh, I'm going to go home and meditate. Because that's still an effort. Because that's still an action. This has to be beyond that. Something that requires zero effort and action. Something which is always here. All you do, it doesn't matter. You're in the middle of your day, you're working or whatever. And you don't even have to have a look of sitting meditating. All you do is pause and you bring your attention, shift your attention. And it's here. Thank you. You're welcome, Kanye. Thanks welcome. for bringing up the question. That was a good one. Papaji always said, it's here. It's available at all times. And it's so close to you that it's even closer to you. It's like your breath. It's so close that we miss it. And a part of the academy and whatever I do is always to help you to bring your attention to that which is who you are, that which is your own nature, that which doesn't require any effort to get to it. Because the presence, the love of the majesty, the supreme, it's always here. Because every breath you take is the power of love. It's Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, is breathing through you and I. If we were not made out of God, of love, of the presence, you can't even breathe for one second. You would just fall down and die. They would say you just had a heart attack where you had a brain seizure. It's the presence, it's the being that is operating through you, means it's, it's the love of the presence is here. So it's nothing to go accomplish it. We already are very much ahead of the game by any moment you recognize that God is operating through you. Besides your ideas of yourself, besides my ideas that what I think of myself or what I need, you know, oh yeah, if I only had this other thing, I would be perfect. These are my ideas. But when you step back, you recognize that the presence, 
Her Majesty, the Supreme, finds you worthy that she is operating through you, is operating your intelligence, your drives, your desires. All of your desires are God's desires. And it's okay. You're striving for a better life. That's God is striving for a better life. You fall into a hole and you, a ditch. It's God's falling, falling down into the ditch. See yourself as that. That is what's operating. And then everything changes. Because the more you're quiet, it's really like this part is so simple. You have to try it. The more you're quiet, the more you're not engaged with your mind, the more you're into silence, the higher become your vibrations. Your vibration starts to rise. That's why a lot of people go to Vipassana meditation. And anyone who's gone to Vipassana meditation, they've come out of Vipassana and you ask them, how was it? They say, oh my God, I got so... Once you go through the mind, mind fucking, the story of mind fucking, you go beyond that after four or five days or whatever, then you, your vibration starts to rise to much higher frequency. You're vibrating and, and when you come out, you notice it because you come back into this other dimension of mind and you say, oh shit, I really love where I was. I was so high. And now I'm back into the trenches of the mind with the world and COVID and what's going to happen and my mortgage and my relationship. Oh, he didn't call me. She didn't look at me. Blah, 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 blah. All this shit comes back. But in that time, you're in absolute silence and your vibrations have arisen to a higher frequency. You're operating in this frequency. And you're not trying to manifest this or doing any of these jumping jacks. You are just in this level. You're surrendered and you're completely high in this higher level of frequency. That comes from being quiet. Silence is your power. The power that silence has is beyond anything else. People don't know that. It's not in our education. They think you have to be, there has to be action. There has to be demonstration. There has to be da 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 da. You don't realize that those who are silent are the most powerful people on the planet. They can move mountains. They can do million different things. It's not coming from the mind because the mind is limited. Silence is beyond the mind. It's infinite, it's unlimited. And when you learn how to be quiet and raise your vibrations to a higher frequency, then the power revealed, power comes to you. Power becomes available. You're not doing it for the power. If you're doing it, then that's mindy. But enormous amount of power becomes available to you. And existence starts to provide things. All of a sudden, some impossible thing starts to happen. They just start giving you things. They start just making your path easy. They're just providing whatever you need.
Not whatever you want. Whatever you need starts to come to you. And that's something I've discovered through direct experience. But that's the way, that's the path you got to go. You got to do it on your own. I can show you the way. I can say, hey, this direction. But I can't take you there. I can just show you where to go. But it can't carry you. You got to do it on your own. And in that, you have to trust. Trusting. And letting go of this imaginary sense of control that you think you're in control. You got to let that one go because it's very scary of letting it go. Because all your life you're trying to stare and navigate things. What do you mean I let go? What's going to happen to me? That is the cross crossroad. One moment, at one point, you have to walk through that and let go, if you can. All right? Anything else? Anybody else? We're going to... We're approaching the end of the academy. It's really nice to see you all again. <laughs> and what this does is by connecting by plugging in we're plugging in it's like you're tapping into internet. Then you have access. Of course, you need a computer, which is your body. You need internet and you need password. So you tap into the collective and then you start exchanging information. So what we do here is like, created the field, open the field, and we tap into, the, into it, we plug in. And by doing that, the transmission takes place. Speaking of that, Hilde, if you remind me next week, let's talk about the importance of keeping really connected with your teacher in this time. Yeah, I'll be glad Yeah, think. yeah, well, let's talk about that. I was thinking about it a couple of weeks ago and I forgot I didn't write it down. The importance of how important, especially in a time of turmoil, of keeping connected to the juice. So what happens is when we come together and we dive in, a transmission takes place, a very powerful transmission. And that transmission helps you to raise your vibrations to a higher frequency, especially in times like this. It brings you back into the center. It, it, forces you to remember the truth of who you are. Who are you? Are you this little individual who's helpless and needy or you're beyond that? And when we dive into the silence, 
you remember who you are. You may not recognize it. It may sound foreign to you, but it, you feel it. That you cannot deny. There is a, uh, my social media address is Zarathustra 5D. My website is Zarathustra.tv. And um, my email is uh, info at Zarathustra.tv. So if you have comments and you want to communicate with me, go ahead and send me an email. Uh, we're going to have our academy next Wednesday. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all, sending you lots of love and light, and uh, be well. Namaste. Oh, I wanted to thank you, the um, two people that made us, made a donation very generously, and I very much appreciate it, and you're making uh, the Academy to survive, and uh, we're able to continue broadcasting, so I'm very, very grateful for your help. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye.